That's a good buck, I think. I think that's a really good buck. Hello, my friends, and thank you for joining us on another exciting adventure into God's Limitless Outdoors. This week, we're following Shane and his brother Kyle into some of the most rugged country that God has ever crafted, chasing elk and mule deer. Ever since Shane was young, he has been fascinated with this country and he's just been drawn to it and has desired to hunt it. And finally, he and his brother Kyle are able to get up here and do it together. But to get there, they had to start all the way in the bottom of this drainage and gain over 5,000 feet before they got on top of this big ridge where they decided to set up their camp, survey the surrounding area, and see if they could churn something up. We hope that you enjoyed this hunt as much as they enjoyed putting it together. Yeah. We had what, one, one herd of cows, maybe some small bulls. Shane spied what could be a shooter down the bottom of this hole down there. So we're gonna go down there right at first light here and see if we can glass him before he goes into the timber. See if we get a shot or not, if he's worth shooting. We're a long ways in though, so <laughs> we might have some regrets if we do shoot him. But it'll make for an exciting story in six days when we get them out. <laughs> you know, when you want to hunt deep in the back country, it just does not work to day hunt it. There is such an unbelievable advantage to getting up way in the back country, setting up your camp and getting set up right on top of where the animals are. Not too close that you're busting them out, but within a short walking distance, it maximizes the time that you spend around the animals and gives you the best shot of turning up a quality animal in the back country. Okay, we've spotted ourselves a good bull down here. Yeah, it's in the other Oh, yeah, there he is. There's a rag or five in front of him. I got him, I'm coming. That's a good solid bull. Yeah, he's a good adult, huh? Close? Yeah. Not huge. No, but that's a really good bull. Oh, yeah, he's good. And you could, couldn't pass up a bull like that. In a good spot. Pretty good spot. Close to the, there, easy pack out. Yeah. <laughs> Holy. He's got good forks there. Oh yeah, he's good though. After deciding this was a solid bull that Kyle wanted to go after, they watched him feed up and over this ridge so that they could close the distance and get down on top of him and hopefully make a shot. Sabers are okay. We're gonna go try and shoot him. A little early in the season, but can't pass that up. No. He's okay. not a skinny six. Just drop down through there. Like that. We're gonna cut through here, hopefully come in right behind him. Kyle and Shane dug in and hunkered down and waited this bull out all day long. And they kept churning up cows absolutely everywhere and small bulls, but this big bull would just not show himself. Well, we sat here all day and I think we saw the same cows come, up, come out of the same area over and over. I don't know what that means.
Right before dark, they finally turned this bull up about a half a mile from where they were expecting him to be, and they didn't have the time to close the distance and make it happen before dark, so they decided to just sit there and watch him, and hopefully they could make it happen the next morning. It's either him or just as big. Yeah. Okay, cool. They should be right out there and that stuff in the morning. Camping on a rock knob, waiting for daylight, and then we'll go try and see if we have any better luck with what we think is the same bull that we didn't find this morning. <laughs> Here we're out of water, so we're melting snow. For the second night. Yeah, yeah, for the second night. How and much I'm, food you got left? I have a couple bags of their mashed potatoes and some ramen noodles. And I'm, I'm getting thirsty. <coughs> Good stuff. But you just can't hardly get enough to a drink like this. Well, what do you think this morning? Should, might be a good day. We camped right behind you there, like 20 feet. Just dry camp, no, no tent or anything, and then walked out here to our little knob. I'm pretty sure we got the bull glassed over there already, but it's still pretty dark. But we should know in like 10 minutes or so if it's him. And then we gotta figure out how to get over there and not scare the other 50 elk. <laughs> so we'll see what the day brings. As it got light, Kyle and Shane started churning up elk, but they couldn't find the big bull, so they kept pressing up this big snowy ridge, trying to get a better vantage point into the basin. It would have been a really pretty shot. That's why I shot that small mule there last year. But we'll probably never see another. Why not? <laughs> Remember I was saying that a few minutes ago. <laughs> it seemed hopeless how it could ever work out. And then there's a bull. Yeah. Oh, just laying there. There's a bull laying right there. <laughs> After all the commotion that just happened. After letting this bull go, Kyle and Shane kept poking around these ridges and looking into all the little draws. And they came over the edge of this lip and looked down, and to their surprise, they saw a monster muley feeding in this little opening. Get, get a rest. That's a good buck, I think. I think that's a really good buck. Oh. <laughs> tried to walk down there. Holy folks. What'd you say like two minutes ago? There should be a deer down here. Yeah, in the ice, ice said that. There's another buck just ran. There, in ice said that because I wanted the credibility of that. <laughs> Works. Sweet. Take this walk in. That is a good buck, I think. I think it's as good as it ever gets. That's. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that thing is. That's a 180 or a 200 buck right there. Yeah, they're super deep and they and they got extra forks on top of the extra forks. Huh. Got my hopes up on him being huge, so we'll see how huge he is. That's not fork today. There to see if I misjudged it real bad. I remember one time you said deep back fork and it was a fork in one. <laughs> Whatever happens, this is not gonna lead you wrong on this deer. No. Even if because even if he's a one forty, he's still a good one. Yeah. 
He's looking real good. Oh yeah, he's got extra stuff from that right side. And he's just got good force on this side. I bet he's got extra set on this side too, yeah. You oh, just yeah. you just can't see him. Oh look how big that body is too. My goodness, that's a gear. Yeah, that's a really good deer. That's by far the best deer you ever shot. Yeah. Yeah. Not super wide, but he's got some blade going here. There, he looks a lot like that deer Justin just shot. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. The deer that scored 195, which he's right up there. That's a 200 class deer. Even with no width? Yeah. He's got good length. Though. He's got super length and everything. Yeah. Man, that is cool. It's blading like right here. Yeah. Okay, so just, yeah. I'm gonna stick it out there. Yeah. I don't know exactly what I see. Oh, you shot him in the neck. Tried it yet, it's looking promising. Pretty good. I gotta salt it down. Well, there, a little pinch of salt goes a long way. Yeah. Every night now we are melting snow for water. It's our main water source up here. And it's really smoky water. Yeah, that's good. You know something life's too short not to live it to its absolute fullest and um there's this reality that david says in psalm 16 11, i know i beat this verse into the dirt but he says that in god's presence in god's presence is fullness of joy and if we start talking about living life to its fullest the one thing that we're all chasing after is we all want fullness of joy we all, all want happiness we all want contentment we all want satisfaction the only thing that will ever satisfy our souls fully and completely is Jesus Christ himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way to the life that you've always wanted. He is the way to eternal life. He is the truth. You can count on his words. You can, you can listen to Jesus and understand everything you need to about life. He will give you clarity about life. He will illuminate the path. His word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, the life that you've always wanted. And you know, we talk about we talk about getting out there and getting after everything and living life to its absolute fullest and enjoying it all. And yet we, we miss the biggest opportunity of eternity when we walk away from Jesus. So I want to challenge you today. Don't be lukewarm. You know, the, the essence of sin is believing that something else can satisfy you more than God and then pursuing it. But here's the truth. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. 
not the beginning, not the middle, but the end of it is the way of death. And here's the deal. It seems right. You think you're going to be satisfied. You think you're going to be full of joy doing these things, having these experiences. But the reality is, the reality is, if we're ever going to live life to the fullest, it has to be with Jesus. Jesus said this in John chapter 10 and verse 10, I came to give life and to give it abundantly. Jesus doesn't want to take anything from you. He wants to give you everything. Look, if we're going to live life to the fullest, we've got to put our faith in Jesus Christ. So I want to challenge you today. Don't be lukewarm. Don't sit on the fence. Don't say maybe tomorrow I'll decide. I want to challenge you today to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him. Believe, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord with your mouth. That means he is the leader of your life. And believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, defeating death, the one thing you can't defeat. And the word of God says you will be saved. Don't sit on the fence. Make a decision today. And hey, if you make a decision today or you want to know more about what it means to walk with Jesus, go over to our website, www.limitlesshunting.com and request a free copy of The First Miles. a discipleship resource. We'll send it to you absolutely free. Until next time, remember, it doesn't matter what you've done. It only matters what you do now. God bless you all and have a wonderful day.